That's a great question because I think you're going to find that the Democrats and Republicans are in agreement that the other side compromised too much. <laughs> what you're seeing right now is both President Biden and Speaker uh, Kevin McCarthy both saying that their side won, the other side did not get what they wanted. And, and you could say that basically is the, that's the ingredient to a good deal and that they're both happy with it, but now they really just have to sell it to their fringe. So Kevin McCarthy has to sell it to the right wing, more conservative Republicans, and Joe Biden has to send it to the left wing, more progressive Democrats. Yeah, and that is the concern that this bill is so needed. I mean, it's days now before it's considered that they may run out of money, the U.S. Treasury. Do you think it could run into trouble with the votes from the extremes of both parties? Uh, the challenge is that they are very hyper aware of that challenge, of that issue. And, and they know that they're not going to get all the fringe votes. They know Kevin McCarthy's, Kevin McCarthy and his team know that they're not going to get all the Republican votes. That's just, they know from the beginning. Kevin McCarthy didn't even get all the Republican votes to become speaker. It took him more than a dozen votes just to become speaker, the, the leader of the Republicans. So he knows he's not going to get all the Republicans. He also knows he's going to need some Democrats. Joe Biden knows that there's a very good chance he's not going to get all the Democrats that he needs. So they're really trying to find something that find legislation and write legislation with this 99-page bill that satisfies enough of the center. And it looks like it probably will, but we're still in the early days. They, the, uh, Kevin McCarthy famously promised 72 hours of review instead of a, a quick up or down vote that you've seen in the past few years on, on major spending packages or major, major budget bills like this. They're allowing 72 hours worth of review and they're trying to whip the votes. And right now it's looking promising and, and people are generally optimistic, which is not a, a very common thing to find in D.C. these days. And, and But I, I would probably share that optimism, that things are looking more positive than not. You know, and Jared, you make a good point because it hasn't, it's been a very long time. I mean, Washington seems to have been paralysed by this divisive nature. It's been a very long time that a kind of middle of the road deal has been struck. It really has. I mean, the last time we had any sort of debate like this was in 2011. And that was when we had President Obama dealing with then Republican Speaker John Boehner. And the implications, I think a lot of folks think that this is just a major a major U.S. issue and it doesn't have any impact on the rest of the world, including Australia. But the implications of what happened from that budget deal were pretty significant and included significant impact on Australia. I mean, the um, Mattis, the Secretary of Defense under President Trump, Jim Mattis, he famously said that the budget deal that was struck in order, in order to placate the Republicans and Democrats all, during that debate still they were still recovering from that half a decade later because of the defense spending cuts and foreign policy cuts in the state department it had a long lasting impact that a lot of folks including myself think that we're still suffering from so this is not something that is just a small budget deal this is has widespread implications yeah and to that point too defense cuts were on the agenda for the republicans uh yeah so i think the defense the defense spending is something that they probably learned from uh, in 2011, and, and they tried to take that lesson and, and apply it here. And so a lot of the, the constraints on budget spending ex are excluded in terms of defense. So on defense and on veterans affairs, a lot of their issues, the, the budget for those issues actually increase, but everything else, the, the discretionary fund, um, spending, is largely frozen for the next couple of years. Yeah. What did you make of the fact that they secured a two-year deal? This is, you know, as we know, a prospect almost every single year. They've got a two-year deal. Do you think also there's any prospect of getting rid of this absurd kind of arrangement? Well, the, the two-year deal is an interesting um, thing to consider because a lot of folks outside of Washington will agree that Washington is broken, the politicians politicians don't know what's going on, but they are actually self-aware. What they've done with that two-year deal is put the next budget um, limit debate to January 2024, uh, or sorry, January 2025, basically a lame duck session. So there will be either a new administration, if Joe Biden has lost the election, or it will be in between sort of the, the slow period of the year between two Biden administrations. And, and there will be a lot of folks leaving. And that is a very self-aware decision on, on their part. They really, all the politicians don't like this. <laughs> they don't like these debates. They don't like how divisive it is. They don't like the, the, the heated rhetoric that you get. They want to do other stuff because what you may not realize is that um, amidst all these debates over this, in many ways, existential issue of the budget, 
all the other legislation that they want to pass has to take uh, is on the sideline and not getting discussed or debated whatsoever. And so I think that is sort of the, the, the lesson learned is that they're, they're really trying to find a way to not let this happen again. Now, the question about whether they want to get rid of this entirely, both Republicans and Democrats over the last decade have had both the House, Senate and the presidency, and they have been unable to get rid of this uh, this uh, ceiling. And so I, I, it's unlikely, but hopefully the, the fact that we're getting ever closer with each debate every every decade at this point, if not more, is, is something that they're going to maybe change in the future. Yeah. It was Kevin McCarthy's first real test as Speaker. Um, how do you think he went? Well, it's still going. We don't know for sure. Okay. Right now, he, he surprised a lot of folks by just getting a Republican bill passed in the first place. And that Republican bill really set the, the frame of the debate because a lot of people in the Biden administration and the Democrats said were not expecting him to be able to even do that. He has such a slim majority. So, But the fact that he did that really set him up and the Republicans up for more success in in these negotiations and allowed, basically forced the Biden administration to negotiate in a way that they hadn't wanted to. Yeah, and hopefully some more bipartisan work together. Lovely to see you, Jared. Thanks so much. Thank you.